Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello there, and welcome to another Hello Self podcast. I am Patricia Leonard, your host, and I am so excited you, you're here again because this is a continuation of a series that I have been doing on the Law of Attraction. And I hope you've seen the first two. If not, you can go to my website and see them. However, the one today, I really want to focus a little bit more on what is attraction and go into the details of what I've been learning because let me tell you, I'm not doing this from an expert understanding. I'm doing it from research, from my own experience. And as you know, this podcast is really about helping others understand who they are. Hello Self is about who am I? What is it I want in my life? And it's time to get that mystique off of your someday shelf that you'll discover who you are someday or you'll live your dreams someday and start living those now. So I'm so excited to share what I've got. And I have some notes here because this is a new territory for me. I'm great at building relationships and one would say that I'm a cheerleader for most people. However, when it comes to Patricia Leonard, <laughs> sometimes I'm hard on her and I don't appreciate, and I've been told this by many people, that Patricia, you have an energy about you that is mesmerizing, attractive, full of energy, and I don't always see that in myself. So I'm saying that many of you will learn some things about your own self and hopefully makes your life more fulfilling. And one thing that I want, Hello Self, is about beginning to fall in love with yourself. Because once you can love who you are, then experts even say, and I believe this, that you can attract the things that you want. And that's really what the law of attraction is about. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about in these series here, the experience of being loved and of loving. I Like I said, I'm going to focus on attraction today and I'll be referring to my notes because this is new to me too. But I want to share it. And as I share it, I learn more and I engage others in their learning and in helping me learn. So it's been a very rewarding and I hope it's rewarding for you. That is my intent. Okay, let's get started. Attraction, they say, is an incredibly complicated thing. And for many reasons, people find someone attractive or vice versa and wonder if the other people or the other person finds. Often that's what is imp what's most important is our compatibility. And it's unlikely that we could even quantify what compatibility is because it's something that really has to be experienced through discussion, through time together, through really being open to ourselves and to the other person about our emotions, our thoughts. And as a society, we don't do that. We won't share our emotions unless we're angry at a person or for most reasons that we create in our own mind. So is attraction a sign of love? That's one of the questions that I wanted to explore, and I'm hopefully sharing some light on that today through others' experiences, writings, uh, experts, 
and um, things like that that articles are written about. Do attraction and love have common themes? That's another question that I found out there. And I wanted to explore that more. How does one recognize the difference? Is this just attraction or am I really in love with that person? And how will I know the difference? It is possible to use the law of attraction in attracting one's true love. This is what the experts say. Or would we be attracting our perception? This is what I ask myself. Is it possible or would we be attracting our perception of love rather than appreciating and allowing love to define itself? Because I believe that love is a natural process of God. And if we as human beings get out of the way and just experience how we're feeling, what's going on, why am I feeling this way? My last podcast was more about the whys and the whats. What does this mean to me? Why am I feeling this way? And so would we be creating, and I said to one of my friends the other day, are we trying to play the music that we want to hear, choreograph the happenings the way we think they should happen, or are we willing to pay attention to who we are and what's going on within us and maybe even explore with the other person? Love seems to exist as an elusive motion, emotion, difficult to describe or define. And I will say in my own, I think it's interesting because I have a son. And yes, I loved my son when I saw him. However, that love grew over time in watching him talking to me and watching him look at me. And we imagine all kinds of things as a mother or as a parent. But I fell more in love with him every day as we experience life. And I don't think in most cases, at least I'll speak for myself, that I allow that in mature relationships. Um, I'm much more judgmental, looking at the external. And yet, I want to think that I'm kind and understanding. However, you know, there is there is our biases. There are our things that we have learned over time that we have to let go of sometimes in order to experience what real love is about. This podcast content is coming from my own personal experiences, other sharings in their books on love and attraction, media, film, and artistic definitions like art. I really think that if we can just experience instead of trying to define everything, even as far as an art piece or going to a movie and imagining that we get in our fantasy world, that's the way I want love to be or something like that. <laughs> True attraction and love are important aspects in the lives of all people. And yet, we abuse it. Now, I would say that most of us would not say that we abuse it. However, listen to the podcast today and check on yourself. We tend to put love and attraction in a box. Titling it something like this. My boyfriend, my girlfriend, my significant other a lover, sexual partner, spouse, acquaintance, romantic partner, friend, better half. You've heard all those things. That's what we call love. That's how we identify it. We use this as a way to help make sense of our what's and why's of our attractions and our love emotions in the situations we find ourselves in. As for my own personal experiences in using the law of attraction, 
in creating my relationships. Funny thing I can say, I have attracted the things that I asked for. However, the things that I maybe forgot to ask for also came a tagged along, and I thought, that's not what I wanted in this. So yes, the law of attraction can work. I wanted a relationship because one of the things that I wanted in my life was a child. And so I attracted a relationship. And I had this picture of how that perfect relationship was going to be. Financial security, a home, picket, white picket fence. And four years later, I found myself in a divorce. And so what I'm learning uh, is that we can choreograph all the movements, the details, and work with our lim limited understanding of what it is that we want to attract. However, the natural process I call the God process, and we often mess it up. Get out of the way and let it happen and explore what's happening. I find that for me, the process of engagement helps to take the situation out of a fantasy and imagining world into an awareness of the experiences of each of us individuals. And I am so bold as to, if I find myself attracted to someone, that if it's in an environment that is conducive, I will ask, I'm very attracted to you. And I just wonder, do you believe in the law of attraction? Do you believe that there are significant others in our lives? Do you believe? So I want to hear. That's why I want to learn so I can go on and play my own game forever and ever and still never really realize what love is about in a relationship with a partner, of the, for me, of the other sex. But it doesn't matter whatever your other partner is or your partner is and how you're looking for love. But I want to know. I want to learn. And the only way I know is to allow myself to get in that. Yet when it comes to my understanding, having a mutually established base or solid foundation of meaning beyond the words associated with love. So what I do is I can explore with somebody else and then I can think about, yeah, that is another aspect of love. In general, today's love is used as a tool, and I'm sure you will agree with some of this, if not in your own life, if you've seen it in others or your children or your friends, it's used as a tool to manipulate, control, influence, exploit, orchestrate, destroy. If you look at the political system, if you look at relationships in general, if you look at the way we look from one society to the other, if you look at the way we look as Caucasians and Black Americans, or it doesn't matter, Asians, it doesn't matter, whatever. We look at ways that we can make ourselves stand out or put them down or whatever. Now, that's not always true with everybody, but as a general society, that's what we need to do. We need to listen more and go from a loving standpoint and not from a manipulative or exploiting or influencing standpoint. And this is what we do in our education systems, in our business systems. I've been in corporate America. I understand the games. I've been in the political system, ran for an office in a small town a political office. And so I understand all these games. And yet, I've allowed them to happen in my own life. So have you. When we let love and admiration in, we create a space 
to experience love. So when we let love, real love, and that is not exploiting or influencing, it's simply being in the moment and becoming aware and having the God kind of love for someone else without judgment, without trying to manipulate, without a one-up kind of thing. I've seen in our society, if you don't go to college, you ain't nothing. That is dead wrong. I tell you, I hired a lot of people in my corporate job and that were college education educated. I am too, but that doesn't mean that I'm any smarter than anyone else because I've seen some of the greatest people, and I can speak for that in my own family, that they did not go to a formal higher education through a formal higher education system, and they have been made some of the best contributions in society that most that are experts in uh, some, they call themselves experts. <laughs> Uh, you know how I feel about titles. I'm like Shania Twain. That don't impress me not much. Show me who you are. I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. When we let love and admiration in, we create a space to experience love. Like everything in life, it begins with us knowing us. We like to put the responsibility Oh, of loving on the other person. You love me first and you treat me this way and then I'll love you. It all begins with you. It all begins with you. That's one of the toughest aspects of understanding love as most of us don't even love ourselves. So how can we love somebody else? Many mistake appreciation attraction, and love for the same thing. And all can be present in a relationship, but there are three distinctly different states is what statistics show. And experts, <laughs> and I'm sure you've experienced it yourself, to appreciate something is to recognize the value and worth of it. And that's something that love is really about. It For me, is they may not see the world the way I see it, but I'm interested in their perspective. And most times, we don't care what they say. We know best. Yeah, we know best. And we call that love. I'll tell you what's right. No. Just because you wrote a book does not mean that you have the answers. It simply means that you have a perspective from your own life experience. I may write a book on relationships now. And just remember, it doesn't mean <laughs> that I'm an expert. Just sharing my thoughts. Attraction may be an indication that something about the other person is what you are wanting in a partner. And that is one thing that I realized in my first, that what stimulated my first podcast is an, a, a moment of attraction that I couldn't even explain. I said, what is this all about? And someone with someone that I barely knew. And I thought, oh my gosh. And so I did some something and I thought, now why are you attracted to that person? What did, what, did, what are some of their behaviors? It was very interesting because I like to be in control. I think I said that in my last podcast, but I was totally out of control. And in this subject, I'm totally out of control. I don't know what love is. Oh, yeah, I profess to know, but I'm learning. And I'm so grateful that I'm sad that I waited this long in my life, but I'm grateful that I'm waking up to what love is about. Attraction may be an indication that something the other person is what you're wanting. And that's what we said. I think it's interesting. I had a conversation with a friend yesterday and there is a mutual attraction. And um, we explored, which is what I love to do anyway. <laughs> but I think that he said something to me that really 
it really, I, I didn't even know I was doing it, but it meant something to him. He said, when I, I was talking, you looked me directly in the eyes. And he said, Patricia, do you know that the eyes are the window to the soul? He said, you were honoring me when you did that. He said, you didn't interrupt. You just sat there and maybe shook your head occasionally or smiled or, but he said, the thing is, you did not take your eyes off of my eyes. And you know what? I had not thought about that before, but he's absolutely right. I like, not about me, but I like someone that gives me their attention when I'm talking. I remember in corporate America, it was before the women's movement. And I was in a meeting and it was all men because I was part of an organization that diesel engines and or engines, I should say. And it was a manufacturing organization. And I remember I was in this meeting and we were talking about process improvement. And I said, I made a suggestion, but I qualified it by starting blah, blah. This may not have anything to do with it, but one thing that I'm thinking, and so they just went on talking like, who's she? Or what is, what happened? And after I got out of there, my manager said to me, Patricia, you have great ideas, but he said, don't ever disqual, don't ever disqualify them by saying, I don't know if this is important. He said, just state a statement. One, here are the three points that I see in this meeting that we need to address. Number one, number two, and number three. It was the best advice I ever had because I can tend, I, I uh, tend to over explain myself. And I think that's a pattern of a lot of women. If it's looking in the eye and giving them the honor and loving them enough as a human being that you want to hear what they had to say. And attraction is, they say that attraction is not love, but attraction is the pull because he told me after that, I really, I was really attracted after you did something. So attraction is the pull that takes us to love because we begin to see some of the things that we appreciate. Yes, if you are around that person looking at them, and this is somebody says, do they know if we're attracted to them? If we're around that person looking at them, talking to them, attracting or interacting with them, and that's exactly what this person said to me. I noticed you showed me your attention. You gave me your attention. And that is that that's good. I like that. That's an appreciation. And that's something that is attractive to me. And experts say that interacting with them and giving them the honor of listening there and do they know and are they attracted and do they know you're attracted? Yes. There is an 80% chance that they know you are attracted to them when you pay attention and listen. So that was great feedback to me. And it wasn't something that I knew ahead of time or that I was trying to practice. But uh, in my discussion with this uh, gentleman, he gave me that direct feedback. And then I found these statistics when I was preparing for this podcast. And I said, very interesting that, yes, the other person knows when we're attracted to them simply by the way we treat them and pay attention to them. Everybody knows that I'm a hugger too. So I pick up energy that way. I like to hug somebody because it tells me a lot of things. I remember hugging somebody one time. <laughs> Oh, uh, and it was a man and he was stiff as a board. And I went, mm, that's not exactly what I call a loving hug. <laughs> I face all these things that I'm talking about. But anyway, approximately how long does attraction last? Dr. Ford Knorr, a neurologist in Mayo, 
Vijayo, California, and author of the book, True Love, How to Use Science to Understand Love, says that movies try to convince us that the love in those movies will last forever. Oh my gosh, I just want something like that. Have you ever fallen in love with the, the guy or the woman in the movie and say, I want a relationship? We all get in our fantasy world. And he says that movies will try to convince us of that. That's part of their role is because that's how we become addicted or remember that movie because it touches something in our heart or our emotions. But Dr. Knorr says, that romance has an expiration date for everyone. He says romance. He says Pas expect the passion of romance to last two to three years. Now, the passion of that moment, it doesn't mean that we can't wake up to creating more passion or creating this uh, love that we feel in a romantic way. But what we see in the movies is set or is established and written in such a way that, oh, if you're not in this kind of situation, there ain't love in your life. <laughs> and we want it. We starve for it. And we go home and we compare our spouse or our relationship, our dating. We start to compare. Well, that ain't the way it is. And we may not say it to them. But. Our emotions will tell it. I don't care if our mind or our mouth doesn't say the words. People know how you feel about them, and you can't hide it. I don't care how you try. To act, okay, when we have that attraction, to act or not to act is the question for each of us when faced with attraction or interest in another. My tendency is to act. <laughs> but Dr. Noor says that maybe, and I did this, it wasn't by Dr. Noor, but I just did it because I thought, what does this mean to me? Dr. Noor suggests first we try and track the explanation behind the intensity of the attraction. As attraction has many sources, you can like the work they do, or you can be impressed with the way they speak, or you can like another language. And, oh my goodness, their language is so romantic, or whatever. One woman that I, when I was reading about, she said, I was attracted to this man because he was wealthy and I felt safe. <laughs> so I laughed, but those are realities in life. <laughs> And that was one of her psychiatrists asked her that question. Uh, so first, what is it? And when I first experienced that attraction that I could, <coughs> excuse me, could not explain, I asked myself later, what is that? What did that guy do that it was simple things? It was simple things. And like I said, I didn't know him very well. I had only met him a couple of times, but we were working on a project and I really liked how he responded to some moments in that project or questions that I had. And so I did begin to understand. So I did that not by knowing, just by what is this about? I am so confused. Secondly, Dr. Norris says, is to ask yourself questions around whether or not you are in a place in life to act on this attraction. I'm not sure that I'm good at that. I just, sometimes I just act or I don't act and I just walk away. But I'm wanting to talk a little bit more to the person to say, do you believe in these kind of things? Or I'm so attracted to you. And I'm trying to figure, I've even said, are you attracted to me? Because I'm trying to figure out, is it something that's coming from my what and why or from their what and why? And it doesn't matter where it comes from. What really matters is, to me at least, is exploring it and not just letting these things constantly build up in each of us and in the other person that they're not good enough or 
we think, I mean, I couldn't meet that person because I don't have the wealth they have, or I couldn't, I, I'm not smart like them, or we always come up with some kind of an excuse a lot of times and walk away. And when we walk away, we just may have lost an opportunity to experience what love is. I want to experience it, so I'm going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to talk anyway. The third thing that Dr. Norris says, it is important to always remember to be true to yourself, to your morals, and do whatever makes you feel comfortable and the most safe. So he's not telling you to do, you got to do this, you got to do that. But this is part of our hello self focus is how am I going to know myself if I just continue to walk away and don't question, Patricia, why are you feeling that way? Is it something you faced as a child? Is it something that you need to wake up to find common ground in your own life and others? Because I, I think many of us will put ourselves down and less than no, oh, there are people that put themselves more than. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See, that's a judgment. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not afraid of anybody anymore. I used to, as a young professional, I remember I wanted to do an expo for the organization. And I went to the VP of finance and he said, we don't have any money for that. I said, I know but I need some money. So I want you to allocate some. I'm not afraid to ask for anything. <laughs> oh, so anyway, he said, that's not in our budget this year. I said, what, what, can't you talk to the CEO about it? He said, that's not, those are the questions that I'm supposed to take care of. Guess what I did? I walked up to the CEO's office and I said, here's what I want to do. We've got entities all over the world. I want to bring them in and let them get to know each other's product because I think we can sell each other's product and we'll build relationships, common ground, if you will. And he said, I'll give you $600. And he gave me a janitor who worked for the company. The interesting thing is I did get some money and I did get a facility. and. I was able to get the entities to pay for their own bringing their products and coming. And the young man that the CEO gave me was a janitor with the company. And what I found out is when I, and I hope I haven't told you this story before, but if so, just remember it's worth retelling. <laughs> but it, cause it's about love. And I said to him, tell me about you. He lived in that small town that I lived in. He owned five properties. Nobody knew that. We don't know. We think that the people that drive the fancy cars, and that's who we fall in love with, the way they look, the way they dress. And the love is not really those material things. So anyway, I said, you know what? I want you to wear a suit that day and I want you to interact with the CEOs of each of these divisions. They thought he was a salaried man. He was so smart and interacted. So they never knew he was a janitor. They said, we really, what does that guy do? And I said, oh, he's got a, a top job here in the company someplace. And the president gave him to me. And he and I had the best time. That's what love is about. Respect and appreciate somebody else. even. When we, when they're not like us, that doesn't mean that <laughs> we're anything to shout about, does it? But anyway, you get the idea is to look at yourself first and then look out at the other person and find out what is that attraction. Some ways to create a space for love is what I want to do next. And the scariest thing about love is opening up yourself for it is what statistics show. Be willing to risk and fully open yourself to love. 
if you're going to get out there, you got to learn to love without fear of getting hurt. So love because you want to experience it and because it's something that you really cannot define but maybe you're feeling something that you can't explain, like I did when I had that attraction to this person. The next thing that he says, the statistics and experts say, is have fun. And when it, that's one of the feedbacks that I got from my conversation with this gentleman the other day, is that you're, you're a bright and shining, there's a light about you, Patricia, and you seem happy and You've got smiles and laughter and you're open. So have fun because fun attracts fun. People want to be around somebody that they can have a good time with or that they enjoy being around, not somebody that's complaining. <laughs> oh. And if you want to attract somebody like that, then be like that. And you just may because they like to hang with people like that. See the other person positively. You know how a lot of times we're saying, I really like him, but all those buts. I used to say, I want a man from New York that wears Armani suits. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know how we do all those things as we're growing up and learning what real appreciation and real love and real attraction is about. And now I found myself attracted to uh, hip hop artists or whatever. It doesn't matter because I'm looking at the person and maybe even looking at myself to say, who do you think you are? That you can be judgmental about that. God is not judgmental. He loves everybody. And if we can love like God loves and quit creating what love is really about, and just experience it, we'll have a better life ourselves and we'll make the life for others a lot better. And I do believe, we had this conversation yesterday, this uh, friend and I, as we were talking about our mutual attraction, I said, what the world needs now is love, true love. You know the song. And it doesn't just mean in a love relationship, it means in politics, education, world relations, cultures, families. Oh, dear, families. Yeah, now's the time. Stop what you're doing and start thinking about what love means to you. And maybe the things that I bring up in some of these podcasts will hit you over the head <laughs> like they have me. See the other person in a positive light. Find some appreciation about them. Like the gentleman, the young person, the person that I was talking to said to me, I like the way you look into my eyes when I was talking. So appreciate the contrast. Be happy and appreciate the moment. Just be happy. You remember that song? <laughs> I love it. Uh, forget about the things that you're wanting for the moment and just experience and appreciate the contrast. Maybe somebody's different than you and you're still attracted to them, but you want them to change this part of them. No. No. Appreciate the contrast because it's something that can help you wake up to who you are. Because somebody is looking at you and saying, I'd really, I really like Patricia, but I wish she wasn't so outspoken. <laughs> oh, I bet there are a lot of people that have said that because I've been a coach for years and I'm not a coach that says everything you want to say. Sometimes I, I, I have asked a question of somebody, when are you going to leave the company? You said you want to get a new career. Oh, maybe in the spring. I said, you want to? I, and so I said, when are you going to leave the company? And this young lady said, I'd like to in the spring. I said, uh, let me repeat the question. When are you going to leave the company? And she said, in two weeks. 
<laughs> I was really that. But you see what I'm saying? It, we put out there, I want to, or I hope, or I'd like to. No, the law of attraction is about declaring it. Declaring. I am ready for a relationship. And I've been telling God that. And I don't even know what it looks like. I'm exploring what I experience and then looking at myself and saying, how does that feel, Patricia? <laughs> so far, it's been really good. Love is not about, and these are some more things that we're looking at as we start to say, how do I open up and appreciate love? Love is not about owning someone, but sharing life in time with someone. So we want to treat the other person like we're trying to change them or we own them or whatever. No, no. If you can't show the other person that you love them enough that they're not jealous of you. I remember I like to hold hands with people. And so I remember I was at an event and I would hug the men. I would hold their hand and take them back to their seat. And I remember one per one guy said to me, Patricia, do you know that if you were in a relationship, your partner would be very jealous? And I thought to myself, no, my partner wouldn't because I would get, let them know that they're my number one. But he told me something about himself. <laughs> That's the way he saw it. No, I'm just open to people. I love people. I want to learn more about people. And I want them to know that I love them. Okay, I'm going to start winding down. And I bet you're probably glad <laughs> you're relationshiped out and loved out and attracted out and all that stuff. But now I want to share something that I found as I was doing my research. And they're short quotes inspirational, philosophical love quotes. And they're from some of the greatest minds. So everybody says, sometimes I just like the simple mind. But, but anyway, I'm going to share about four of those quotes that stood out for me, and I hope they do for you. Some of the greatest minds wrote these writers and philosophical thinkers that have ever lived. And that was the purpose of the love quotes on the internet. I find them, I found these that I'm sharing very thought-provoking and a perfect closing to this podcast today. Preparing for these podcast theories on the law of attraction has actually opened me up to letting go of my own hangups. It's not that I'm finished because life is never finished until we're finished. <laughs> But about the possibility of attracting, it made me think, Patricia, there is a chance for you to have and attract genuine love. And I begin to experience that already. And part of it is I had a converse, I have a conversation with the other person, and we like each other's conversation. And there's no way we can just be saying what the other person wants us to say because we had never met before. <laughs> so I'm having the time of my life just opening up to the possibility that I can have love in my life. And without defining, controlling it, choreographing it, and just letting it be and enjoying it like a gift like a special gift from God. And then no, even though I've been married twice and in a loving relationship once, I have to admit that I still have a difficult time opening fully to someone to love me. And for that reason, I share these things because I feel there may be others of you out there in that same boat with me. However, I am opening up, and I can't say exactly how I'm doing that. I'm experiencing every moment. Every moment. When I'm cooking or whatever, I'm just experiencing it. Patricia, you're great at that. 
You're really a good author. You're a great actress. You know how to open people up in podcasts. So I'm learning how to appreciate these kind of things in my life about myself. Okay, now for the love quotes. And then I'll share with you what my next podcast is about. For the first love quote, the first duty of love is to listen. Isn't that interesting? That's the feedback I got in my conversation with this friend yesterday. Who already I feel love toward already. It's interesting. This was Paul Tillich, German-American philosopher and theologist, and a theologian. And that is exactly what his quote was that was on love quotes. Another one, two hearts in love need no words. And I have experienced that recently too. Just like I said, I'm opening up and specifically with this one person who I don't even know yet, but yet I know him. Marceline de Bordes Valmore, a French poet, stated that love quote. Here's the third one. Love is the ultimate truth at the heart of the universe and transcends all boundaries. Deepak, Deepak Chopra. Indian American author. Many of you already know him, I'm sure. But it's all of these are about finding common ground to me. Is how do you see that? How does that make you feel? How do you express that in your everyday walk in life? It's it's finding that common ground with someone else and learning from them. It doesn't mean that that their common ground is always the right way. No, this is a sharing and experiencing each other and learning from each other. And the final one, every heart, and I love this, every heart sings a song incomplete unless another heart whispers back. I love that. I think that is so cool. And that's true. We can sing a song about love. I always say, oh, wow, thank you for that. That made my heart sing. So I'm that, this is by Plato, Greek philosopher. But I really like that one because you can, you can sing your song, but if there's no whispers back, it's just the song out there. So it's nice. And we don't have to expect the whispers in a certain way. But yeah. I want to experience love, and I know that how, I don't know how yet, but I do know that in conversations recently, it has been something that I had never experienced totally before, and I'm so grateful. So for my next podcast, I plan to continue to create more podcasts and interview more guests on the Law of Attraction in my Hello Self podcast. And uh, these last three, I have been doing myself, but I want to talk to more pod guests that I have about their understanding of attraction. And it doesn't always have to be a love, attractions to anything. And what were the Hello Self moments that they think changed their ability to see that attraction or to feel that attraction. It might be to a, a new job, something that they had never even done before. It might be uh, creating an art piece that speaks to them and they hope it speaks to others. And it does. Um, because I believe that words are not impactful anymore. Because we just speak words, I love you, you're the greatest. We just speak these words. And do we mean it? I don't know. We have to ask ourselves. So I think words are shallow. I like the arts, a song, an artistic piece, an expression of spoken word, a comedy. 
those kind of things to me. And that's why I created High Heels Cabaret, a variety show. And that's exactly what it's about. It's giving each person an opportunity to express in their own way. And somebody out there relates to it and falls in love with what they shared, the person or whatever. And I believe that our, and and Shakespeare taught that. I'm a great lover of Shakespeare. But Shakespeare taught that through theater, artistic expression, we learn about life. And that's where he taught life lessons. I think, as I think, this is a universal issue regarding relationships. So I want to continue more podcasts, interview more guests on the law of attraction regarding relationships, not more money, not getting a car, not all that stuff, but on relationships and specifically our own relationship. So how we've seen it change because of something we were attracted to or someone. I think this is a universal issue as many in our society right now need to understand and reconcile with themselves. So my next podcast, I hope you listen. In the next podcast series on relationships, I will share 10 signs of compatibility in a relationship. Because remember, we started out today, that is one of the most difficult things to define is our compatibility. What do you, how do you mean you're compatible? And I think that's very difficult. That can indicate that you are and your partner are compatible with each other. Until then, I want to see you then, I hope. But you can see my podcasts on my website. And I also put them on YouTube. And then they're on business radio out of Atlanta. So there's a lot of ways. And then all the social media sites. Until then, this is Patricia Leonard, your Hello Self podcast host, signing off with a reminder, as I always do, keep dreaming, believing, and loving yourself and others. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming. Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard.